Sure. Good morning, church. Good morning. That was a little weak. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Yay, there we go. We are here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're so excited that you are here. I can't tell you how thrilled I am that we have Brother Sean Donaldson bringing the word. So prayers for him and accolades and yay. So th this is my plain clothes dress now. <laughs> it's my summer mode. Here we go. We, if you are visiting, we especially welcome you here today, and we would ask that you would just fill out a form that's in front of you on one of the pews, put it in the offering plate so we can reach out to you. We pray if you do not have a church that you would make this your church home. Will you now join me as we stand together for the call to worship? All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from afar away. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Let us remain standing through the hymn, Jesus Shall Reign. Brothers and sisters, let us not fool ourselves into thinking that we do not need the grace of Jesus Christ in our lives, for all of us have sinned. But thanks be to God, he invites us to confess our sins and be assured of his forgiveness. Will you please join me in the prayer of confession? Lord, forgive us when we see your miracles all around us and still doubt your power, presence, and love. Forgive us when we treat this world and each other with careless indifference or with malice. You who have created the most wondrous things from the smallest of particles can create in our hearts confidence and hope. From our lives, you can fashion the most delightful miracles that can serve you through acts of mercy and kindness. Free us, Lord, 
to receive your blessings and, having received them, to find the numerous ways in which we can serve you. Heal our wounded hearts, hear our cries, come to us and bring us home. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us continue in silent prayer, speaking to the Lord personally. Hear now these words of assurance. Let go of your fears and doubts. The Lord God pours love on you, in you and through you to others. Be at peace, amen. I'd like to invite the youth to come up and join me on the step.
Good brave girl. How are you? Good? All right. Well, today is a special day, because not only do we have a special preacher, but we also have graduation. And in 1 Timothy, it tells Timothy to really study, study the word. Study so that you can show that you know what you believe. And so this church was established a long, long time ago, and Pastor George Walker Smith loved the Lord Jesus, but he also really wanted people to know that education was super important. So he really um, promoted that, and this is, I have to say, a congregation that has more education than any other congregation I've ever served in. So there you go. So we want you to do well in school, follow in the footsteps of maybe your grandfather. Maybe, that'd be good. <laughs> but certainly, Thankful that we get to study the word, but also study in every place we are. So let's pray, and you'll be off to Sunday school. I think today is a service day, am I right, Miss Jackie? There we go. They're going to help serve, and then and then you'll help serve, and, and then we'll have some of the good stuff that you're helping get ready for lunch today. Sound good? All right, let's pray. Lord God, thank you um, that we do love you, Lord, and serve you. We also know, Lord, that you have given us a mind. And may we use our mind to know your word and to serve you, Lord, in every place you put us, whether it is in kindergarten or in graduate school, that we do study to show that we appreciate all the gifts that you have given to us and that we use our mind both um, for the edification of the world but to give glory to you in all things. We thank you in Christ's name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. And um, give a few highlights of announcements. Uh, first of all, in giving to the church, we have a new opportunity to give our tithes and our offerings through a QR code. And you'll see that right here in the back of your order of service. Please note that, that barcode on the back. And today is fellowship hour. With, we're gonna celebrate, celebrate our graduates and June birthdays. And I have it on very good authority that there is lots of food. <laughs> and on June 16th, we're gonna welcome special speaker, Wayman Yadell, along with recognizing Man of the Year, fellowship hour after worship to celebrate June Juneteenth, and you find the rest of the announcements right here in your order of service. Thank you. The first scripture reading today comes from James chapter 2, verses 14 through 24. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that said, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. Holy wisdom, holy word. Good morning, church.
Meditation on Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Stranger, be not afraid. Come in, come in, the table is laid. I see thee be weary. Please sit yourself down. You are tired. You are thirsty. Come see me now. You can rest from your worries and your burdens lay down. Stranger, be not afraid. Come in, come in, the table is laid.
Good morning. Good morning. The second reading is from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, you did not look after me. They will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Holy wisdom, holy word. There was a uh, famous movie many years ago that clearly illustrates the difference between talking to talk and walking to walk. It came out in 1972. It was called The Godfather. It was a story of a mafia crime family led by a man known as The Godfather, Don Corleone. In it, The Godfather's son would eventually become the new leader of this infamous crime family. His name was Michael Corleone. He was married and he had a son. While Michael was in his beautiful church at his son's baptism, the movie cuts to multiple people who worked for him, moving into position against his enemies. The priest asked Michael, 
Do you renounce Satan and all his works? He replies, I do, announce, I do renounce them. In that moment, his first hitman kills a group of people in the elevator. While standing in church, confirming his belief in Jesus Christ, Michael had a dozen people brutally killed. Michael Corleone talked the talk, but he didn't walk the walk. Those who know anything about mobster history knows that many of them were active members of their church with their families. They attended regularly. They made large contributions. They believed that as long as they acknowledged Jesus as their savior, their actions, their acts didn't matter. Of course, the Bible reading today from James says otherwise. Verse 24 says, you see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. The mobsters believed that they could kill people as long as they said Jesus. What exactly does it mean to walk the walk? Simply put, it means to behave like a Christian. We don't have to look any further than the words of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ when he explained it in Matthew 25. There, he lays out his expectations of how we should treat others. He identifies certain behaviors that exemplify what walking the walk is. He said, feed the hungry, give a drink to those who are thirsty, help a stranger, clothe those who need clothes, look after the sick, and visit those who are incarcerated. In Matthew 22, a man asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second one is like it. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. If you love others, you will help them in their time of need. That is loving your neighbors as you love yourself. That is how you walk the walk. But the further removed some are from poverty and struggle, the harder it is for them to understand and sympathize with others. Not everyone we see destitute on the street chose to be there. We can't change their past, but we can help them with their future. As for the wealthy, Jesus said it best. He said it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When the wealthy have a problem, they instinctively turn to their money. When those who walk the walk have a problem, they instinctively turn to Almighty God who can solve their problem or give them the peace of mind and patience to deal with it. God helps those who follow him, those who walk the walk. Because to walk the walk, one must believe. And as is written in Hebrews 11, those who come to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek after him. The more you walk the walk, the closer you will be to God. There are many enemies to walking the walk. Our own natural desires put us on a path away from God. But that's not the focus of this message. I want to talk specifically about how we interact with others and not about our personal sins, which anyone who's a Christian knows you got to get away from it. I remember when I was with a group of friends, and I'm using that term loosely, and we were leaving this very fancy restaurant. A homeless person was there in a the parking lot, and he reached out his hand asking for money. I gave him some money. He looked surprised and excited, and he said, now I can eat. He jumped up and quickly went away. The people with me became angry. They became very angry at me. They said, I was perpetuating his homelessness by helping him. That he should be out there working and feeding himself. I was perpetuating his homelessness. The only thing I was perpetuating was the will of God. Jesus says in 1 John, if anyone has material possessions, which is most of us, and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. It's not my job to judge how people came to be in the state they are in. In my job now at the transit service, I see homeless people every day, and it's very sad, men, women, and children. I understand that no one wants their kindness to be taken advantage of, because some people will. 
I depend on the inner guidance of the Holy Spirit to guide me and direct me as to who I should and should not help. I know it's by the mercy and grace of Almighty God that I am where I am today. I don't take his mercy and blessings for granted, nor do I judge others. As we all try to walk the walk, it's difficult to not know our own issues and our own challenges. I had a conversation with a student of mine years ago uh, who identified as a Christian. He went through a litany of reasons, I'm going to call them excuses, of why he couldn't help anybody. He had a close family member who was sick. He was taking care of them. He was struggling at work, couldn't get promoted. He said, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't even have any friends. He said, I don't have any money to spare. I can't even help myself. How can I help somebody else? I told him that walking the walk isn't just helping other people with money. It's about love. He says, love, what do you mean? The kind of love that says hello to someone on the street, that helps an elderly person open a door, that helps someone push a car out of the road to stall, listening to somebody who needs a sympathetic ear, outwardly showing that we care for other people. That's walking the walk. I went to a party years ago with a group of people from work. There was about 25 of us, men and women. People were drinking, dancing, conversing, having a good time. At our table, uh, we somehow got into a discussion about religion, which is one of the three things you should never talk about. Uh, one of the men, his name is Bill, uh, described his devotion to his church, how active he was in it, and how he tithed and supported the church no matter what. Uh, the girl sitting next to him, and I'm going to call her Sally, uh, she was an atheist. And she and Bill debated and got into this long, protracted argument about what Christ is, what Christianity is, and it went on for quite a while. Finally, she just shrugged her shoulders and said, whatever. Bill told her, uh, you know, Sally, I'm going to pray for you because you don't know what you're missing out on not being a Christian. So he prayed for her disbelief and he left. Bill was obviously walking the walk. As the evening went on, uh, different people went to different tables to talk to other people in the group. Uh, me and Sally stayed where we were because we love movies and we were talking about the movies and such. Uh, later, we heard cheering and loud laughter coming from this table across from us. Uh, it was Bill, and Bill was telling jokes, uh, as he usually does. He's an extremely funny guy. Uh, as he was telling his jokes, he had his arm around a woman, and he was kissing her passionately. Now, a few people had brought their other halves, their significant others with them, uh, to this party. Sally and I recognized that the woman he was hugging and kissing on was not Bill's wife. Sally looked at me oh, with a smirk on her face, and she said, some Christian. I'll never forget that. To Sally, Bill was just talking to talk like all the others supposed to be Christians she knew. They weren't walking the walk. People are always watching and appear gleeful uh, as a Christian steps off that path. It's as if to say, you see, you're no different than we are. And of course, we aren't different than they are. The only difference is with God's help, we're trying not to be. When you talk to talk, would it not be helpful to walk? Listen, there are judge for a single act or even a bunch of acts, but there has to be a cutoff point. If you are walking the walk, your steps have to narrow and be in line with what our Savior wants. Sometimes he sends people or events to steady us and put us back on the path that's narrow. Praise his holy and magnificent name for doing this. How many people do you know would give you a thousand chances to fix something? A thousand chances to get something right? God does. He recognizes who and what we are. He knows what our challenges are. He knows what our needs are. And for those of us who believe, he reaches out and he helps us and he saves us. Period. The path he set before us is impossible to walk on without his help. That's the importance of daily prayer. Waiting until a person is in a hospital, hooked up to a bunch of machines, is probably not the best time to start praying to God. When you walk the walk, even if you end up in that hospital bed with those tubes hooked up to your body and you can't even speak, you don't have to worry because the Holy Spirit will be there with you to comfort you. God never fails us. Walking the walk is difficult. Ask Jesus, the Son of God, set an example for us. 
Our walk may be difficult, but it doesn't compare to his. And not because of what he suffered, because he didn't have to. He paid the price and penalty for our actions so that walking the walk wouldn't be in vain. Hebrews 12 reads in part, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, Jesus, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't give up. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. Let me say that again. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. How serious are you about walking the walk? How serious really is anybody? How would someone walk the walk if they knew for certain it would cost them their life? In the Old Testament, there's many examples of people who did just that. They spread the word of God knowing that it could cause them to be captured, tortured, and killed. They didn't fail. But what about today in our society, in modern times, here in the United States of America? Are there people who would do that? Are there people who would preach the word and acknowledge God knowing that they could die? And people say, well, this is America. That's not going to happen. I want to read from a 2015 news article out of Oregon. The title of this article is Oregon College Shooting. He asked, are you a Christian? Then shot and killed them. Here's the article. Details have begun to emerge of the terrifying experience of students and staff at the Umqua Community College where a 26-year-old, and I'm not going to say that demon's name, shot and killed nine people and injured at least seven others. He died in a shootout with police who responded to calls about an active shooter at the school. Anastasia Bolin, 18 years old, was in class when he came in and started shooting. And this is what her father told CNN. He said his daughter, who was undergoing surgery for her injuries, survived by playing dead. He came in and there was gunfire immediately and he scattered the room. For what I understand, she said that he shot the professor point blank. He died instantly. Others had been injured and then this man had enough time. I don't know how much time elapsed. He was able to stand there and start asking people one by one what their religion was. Are you a Christian? He would ask them. If you are a Christian, then stand up. And they would stand up. He'd say, because you're a Christian, you're going to see God in about one second. And he shot and killed them. And he kept going down the line doing this to people as each one stood up and died. There's other details that I'm going to skip, but you get the point. I can see the first person that asked the question answering it because he didn't know what was going to happen. But after that first person was shot and killed, knowing that he was going to be shot and killed if he answered and responded that I am a Christian, who on earth would be that foolish to stand up and say I am a Christian? These kids did. They didn't talk the talk. Those students walked the walk. I've been teaching for many years. When things like this happen, it makes me sad for what we become. But I know that those of us who believe are truly in God's hands, even to the end. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us walk the walk until the very end. Praise God. Amen.
Let us turn our hearts in prayer together. I will lead us in a pastoral prayer and then we will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Lord Jesus Christ, for all those who need our compassion and care, for all those who commit themselves to the poorest and for those who are afraid to be involved, we ask, Lord God, that we would serve you in serving others. For all who have lost their way in life, we cry out to you to make the church welcome them and give them you and your good news to live for. With all those who hunger for food, who thirst for justice, who crave for human dignity, we cry out that we may hear your voice in them and that we may serve you by serving people. Lord God, with those who care for the sick and the handicapped, for doctors and nurses, pharmacists, midwives, we cry out that we may recognize you in those who need affection, loving care. This morning, Lord God, we pray for our church family. We pray for Edie Grease as she's in hospital, for Jennifer Logan, for Jennifer Henry, for those who have come down with cases of COVID, we ask that you would be with them and heal them. Hear our prayers for dear brothers and sisters. May your healing hand be upon them. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus, the great physician. Lord God, for people driven from their homes with the many victims of war and civil strife, with the strangers living in foreign lands, we cry out that you may be hospitable to them through us. With those who are imprisoned because of their convictions, with all those who are persecuted, who are prisoners of their hatred, their greed, or their failings, we ask you to free them. Lord, our world is in conflict in so many places and we ache over the wars and bloodshed. We pray for the conflict in Israel and Gaza, for those rescued after months and months of captivity, and we pray for those who lost scores of loved ones because of the rescue. Come, Lord Jesus, bring peace. Use us, Lord God, to be your people, to do your work. The voices that cry out to us the eyes that plead with us. May we recognize you in them, Lord, and love you in them. We ask all these things with the prayer that you taught us, Lord, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As the ushers come forward this morning, just a reminder that as an act of worship, we give our offerings to the Lord and pray God's blessing that they would be used to bring the good news to all the world. Let us give abundantly of what God has given to us.
let us dedicate our gifts. Holy God, we offer these gifts in gratitude for your renewing guidance in our lives. We pray that these resources will provide ministries to the suffering, food to the hungry, hope to the poor, a spiritual presence to the needing. And in the name of the one who suffered for our sake, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Before I give a blessing, just come celebrate all the graduates, and thank you, Enel, for putting that video together. We also want to recognize that Ernie Cavillo, am I, I hope I'm saying your last name correctly, will be 90 this month, so we're going to celebrate his birthday with our birthday lunches, and we'll sing happy birthday to him there. But as you go out, and as our brother Sean has said, walk the walk, people will know you are Christians by your love. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.